So I've got the 1880s model taken apart. I have the receiver stripped down. Here's all the pieces here. They look to be in pretty good shape. I did find this uh, little piece of cotton or cloth in there, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but all the pieces are pretty good shape. They have some rust on them. But nothing significant, no crazy amount of pitting or anything. Markings look good too. Striker and spring are intact. Got to take apart this trigger right here. Punches came out pretty easy. Got the front band here. The lower band is missing. Which actually made it pretty easy to take apart. Cleaning rod's in actually really good shape. The only pitting on it is this part right here. Otherwise, it's pretty minor. Here's that marking. BSA. Pitting under the barrel is actually not too bad. It's pretty light. Actually, don't see any real deep pits. Usually, this is pretty badly pitted. Really, the deepest part I see is right around here. But these Martini Henry barrels are pretty thick. And usually, this piece right here is pretty badly pitted, but it's fairly intact. As far as the, the butt, I'm still working on that. You can see these butt plate screws. Got some coil working in there. This um, this top screw, you can see the bottom of it's pretty much fused in there. It's so probably going to have to use a, one of my impact drivers to get these out. This retaining screw is also badly damaged. You can see here at some point in its life got a pretty good nick. Um, I examined it before I knocked out the um, cocking indicator here and this part was already gone. It looked like at some point someone had just driven this out. It's a pretty common issue with Martini Henry's is the screw gets damaged or the cocking indicator gets driven through it. So we're going to see some proof markings on the barrel. So I'll go ahead and clean this up and show you guys how it goes. So I just want to take a pause here and show you a good way to take the cleaning rod out if it's stuck. So the good news is, is on these Martini Henry's it's mostly exposed. So typically what I do is I just get this uh, WD-40 rust release penetrant spray. And what I do is, is I spray it along here. Let it sit for a few minutes. Put it inside of this workmate. Or I guess you could use a vise. Just make sure you pat it. Then I get a flathead screwdriver and just basically slip it into the slot here. Now, if you turn it like this and it's really stuck, you won't actually turn a lot of the, um, the rod in there. So what you need to do is you need to put your hand right here to hold the rod steady and then turn it. And what it'll do is eventually it'll turn the whole cleaning rod here all the way down into here, which you can't actually access. And once the whole rod is, is basically spinning like this, then you know that it's ready to come out. Just wanted to give you guys a tip because this cleaning rod can be a real pain to get out. And unless you're able to get it out, it's very difficult. I mean, really impossible to take apart the weapon. It's got it all taken apart. See the block right there, the lever. These are all the internal parts, the spring and striker are intact. Covered in grease, but looks like they're in pretty good shape. The grease will actually help protect these. 
all these parts, so I'm actually kind of glad to see how much grease is in here. Did wipe the receiver down a little bit. See that marking for BSA? Looks like 1878. So I haven't cleaned the barrel yet, but they really caked the grease under the barrel, which actually might have been a really good thing because at least right now I don't really see any pitting. So I'll have to see what this looks like after I strip all this grease off. But I mean, you can see it's just you know caked under there. Got the cleaning rod out. Now the cleaning rod is pretty good shape. There is a little bit of pitting right there. But overall, especially the area that was inside of the wood, pretty decent shape. Again, a little bit of pitting right there. Definitely could be worse. Four stock looks to be in good shape. Just gotta get all this grease off of it. You can see the channel here, the barrel sat, caked in grease. Probably end up protecting both the wood and the barrel. Looking at the butt stock here, or the butt plate rather, this screw will probably come out okay. This one I'm a little concerned about. You can see the slot's pretty shallow, so I might need to get a Dremel and extend that a little bit in order to get this thing out. Go ahead and let these parts sit a while and I'll start cleaning it up. So this is the 1880s model. I actually have this one broken down completely. I was able to get the butt plate screws out with an impact driver. Stock bolt's pretty corroded but at least the threads are in good shape. Four stock looks pretty good. You can see the finish is coming out pretty nicely with some linseed oil. We have a little bit more cleaning to do with the channel here for the barrel, but again, coming along nicely. Small parts look good. They didn't have very much grease on them at all. But they aren't heavily pitted and rusted which is good. The block looks really nice. Same with the internal pieces over here. This tractor looks good. Now the buttstock has quite a bit of damage on it. You can see right here, big chunk basically just blown out of it. A little concerned about repairing it simply because there's this damage right here and so if I were to repair this it's just a little too close here so I have to reevaluate whether or not I want to repair this or replace this this one has quite a bit more pitting than the 1870s model but overall pretty shallow on both sides nothing I'm too worried about So most of the parts for both these models sit in some hops. A gallon Ziploc bag again for a few more days. And I'll wipe them all down again. And I'll look at uh, getting this buttstock replaced. And I'll look at getting this one put back together. So now I have both buttstocks off of these weapons. Taking a look at this one, this was on the 1870s model. You can see the split's not too bad, it's it's repairable. This little stock repair that occurred some time ago just popped right out, so I had to re-glue that. The cup's also gonna have to get cleaned out. But it looks pretty nice with just a little bit of linseed oil. I had to repair this crack as well. Um, this screw right here, just that hair area right there is just pretty much stripped out. So I have to re-drill and fill that and drill another hole. 
really think this butt stock is not something I want to repair. It's just the damage here is just so close to each other and in such a small area that I just don't think it's really worth it. Probably keep it, but I don't think I'm going to bother repairing that. The other side of the barrel, and this looks pretty nice. Still got a lot of bits of hardened grease. You can see that underside the barrel here. But very minimal pitting. Looks pretty good. Marking looks pretty nice as well. The 1880s model here, marking looks great. This one has a bit more pitting than the 1870s model, especially right in this area, quite a bit of it. Part of the reason is just it really didn't have any grease put on it when it was put in storage. So this area that's usually covered by the stock is usually pretty well attacked by rust and other types of erosion on the metal. Another thing I do like about another thing I do like about these rifles is these pieces right here that fit right into the fore stock aren't pitted and usually that's a problem is it there's a lot of pitting on these parts either the block itself or within the holes. Letting it sit overnight, you can see it's worked out some more rust and grease. But you can see that there's some pretty nice markings here underneath the receivers. I ended up having to use a rubber mallet to get the butt stock out of here. I had to lightly tap the receiver to knock it loose. had a bunch of hardened grease in there that made it super tight. So I had to kind of knock that out. And there's still a few chunks in there that I have to clean out. Same with this one. Still a few little pieces of hardened grease in here. I have to clean this whole area out. Letting it sit overnight seems to have loosened a lot of it up though. So these are all the small parts for the 1880s model. Spent some time cleaning them up. The butt plate, pretty heavily pitted. Both sides. Screws I'm going to let soak longer. They still got a little bit of grease in them. Kind of hardened up. And the threads have got a little pitted, but otherwise still serviceable. Stock bolt's got some rust and pitting. I do have another one I could replace this with, but I'm not sure if I will yet. Lever looks great. It's got a really nice marking there. Here as well. These two pins right here, also pretty good. Minor pitting. Put together the trigger assembly. Came out pretty nice. It's got some nice markings as well. This is the block. Put it back together as well. It's in pretty good shape. Caulking indicator. That's the extractor. Some nice markings on it as well. This is the front band. It didn't have a rear band. It just came with this front band. But the front band's in pretty good shape. Moving on to the forestock. Forestock looks pretty good. Put some linseed oil on it. Put a little bit of beeswax as well. Grains came out pretty nicely. You can see in the channel where the barrel lays. Really nice condition. Some markings here. 
no cracks here. Usually you get some cracks in this area because of the recoil. Same thing on the other side. Seems to be kind of a bit of a bend right here. Was missing the pin right here that holds the rear band in place. When I get a replacement rear band, I'll probably use a, a brass pin. Use a nail as well. Also remove the nose cap and this little piece right here. Cleaned out the stock in that area. It was pretty nice. So. So it's good to clean that out because this part can easily start corroding. But all the parts of the 1880s model look pretty good. Now I'll go ahead and move on to the 1870s model. So here are the parts for the 1870 model. The butt plate isn't as badly as pitted as the 1880s model. Screws are okay. Uh, I'll probably replace this screw. I have an extra original screw I can put in there just because the head was kind of deformed from being on the top of the butt plate for so long. Probably banged against the ground a lot. There's the caulking indicator. It has a shorter caulking indicator, which is interesting. These parts look pretty good. Put the trigger assembly back together. Looks pretty good. Some nice markings on there. There's the tumbler. Also looks good. These parts look pretty good. Here's the block. It's interesting that this is a Mark II, but has a four stamp on the on the block here. There's the front band. So this rear band here, I still haven't been able to get the screw out of it yet. I did put some heat on it. I think I'm, I'm close. I also was able to break the um, kind of the seal on the head of the screw here. You can see that that's usually half the battle is getting this screw head to break free from the rest of the band. And you can see it it is moving slightly. So I did break it free. So some more oil and heat and this thing will come off. This is the stock bolt, pretty heavily pitted. I have spare stock bolts, so I'll probably replace this. Simply because of how heavy the pitting is. Really happy with how the four stock came out. Put some linseed oil on it. Looks pretty good. It is missing the pin that goes here. More like a nail, really. So I'll probably replace that with a either a small brass pin or something similar. Wood looks pretty good. Again, cleaned up nicely with some linseed oil. This is definitely a serviceable four stock. Again, I removed the metal pieces here, the nose cap and this piece right here, cleaned it out, cleaned the channel and the wood, keep it from rotting. Cleaned out these screws as well. Inlay for the barrel looks pretty good too. Nice and clean. There's a bit of a crack here, but it's a surface crack. It doesn't go deep at all. So overall a pretty nice four stock, should go well on the Mark II. So I'm going to go ahead and put all this back together. I have to repair the butt stocks before I finish these, but that's for another video. So I got them sitting in oil here, these actions. I'll wipe them down one last time, get out any hardened crud or rust out of them. Four stocks, they're pretty much ready to put on. As far as the butt stocks, I'm going to end up replacing this one. 
I said before, I'll replace this one and I will be repairing this one. So basically be repairing this split right here. I'll be re-gluing this old stock repair here and then installing that. So I do like both of these rifles. I would say the 1870s model is definitely the better of the two, definitely for shooting. The, uh, I don't know if you've seen, the, the 450 round is pretty meaty, so I always enjoy shooting this round. I'll definitely do a video um, next time I go out and shoot. Once I finish these stock repairs, I'll post another video, do a video of these things put back together. Feel free to like and subscribe.